The king and all of the people in the city heard the word of the Lord proclaimed through his prophet Jonah. And the scripture says that all the people repented and turned from their evil ways. This was by far the largest evangelistic mission ever accomplished by any prophet in scripture. More than 120,000 people were changed and all of it had to do with the prophet being obedient and furthering the plan of God. And God honored the people. God saw their true repentance from their heart. He saw that they had truly turned from their wicked ways and God showed compassion and relented and did not bring upon them the destruction that he had threatened. Chapter 4 begins with the most telling statement of all. When we consider this prophet Jonah, who we thought had been changed when we read his prayer in chapter 2, Jonah, the one who proclaimed that he had a song of thanksgiving to God and who now vowed to make good on what he had promised to do for God, Jonah, the one who spoke the famous quote, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. Jonah was now, the scripture says in 4 and 1, greatly displeased and angry. Uh, you see, Jonah knew what real preaching is designed to do. Jonah knew that God calls preachers to speak the word with a goal of changing lives. Amen. Jonah knew that God wants all of his people saved. God wants all of his people free. God wants all of his people whole. Amen. But after seeing that the message God sent through him was effective, Jonah got upset. Jonah knew that his purpose in going to Nineveh was to warn the people, but he got mad because they heeded his warning. Oh yes, he knew the effectiveness of good preaching. He knew how God can get in the middle of a sermon and somehow connect it to different people's hearts and different people's experiences. He knew that he could speak one word for God and that word could speak to the unique circumstances of people from all walks of life. It was as if talking intimately to each individual who heard him while also talking to everybody collectively at the same time. Jonah knew that God sent him there to warn the people so they could avoid the coming wrath of God, but he still got mad when the thing that he was sent to do actually happened. Jonah was upset because the God whom he knew well, the God he had just pledged to serve no matter what back chapter 2, would be faithful and show compassion on these people. And Jonah was upset about God's grace. The grace of God that is no respecter of persons and that extends to all who will humble themselves and follow him. Yes, yes, yes. But you see, Jonah was a prophet. Jonah was a foreteller. Jonah was supposed to have special insight into upcoming events because he had been anointed by God into people's lives based on what was about to happen. And in those days, in our Old Testament biblical times, the true test of a prophet was whether or not what they prophesied came to pass. I wonder if Jonah's position of leadership got the better of him. I wonder if Jonah got a little selfish and worried about his own reputation. I wonder if Jonah and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. He knew that God was a God who relents. God is a God who refrains from sending calamity at the slightest hint of a conversion, at the slightest glimp, glimpse of a changed people. Jonah knew that a prophecy about doom was designed to wake the people up and get them to change their ways and follow after God. Jonah knew 